Libertarius and Septimus arrive at the uh, the guard shack at the base of the hill where uh, Captain uh, Bosley let you guys in before. As you approach, um, you see Nestor, the young elf, is standing outside. He kind of waves at you as you come. He says, Oh, hey there, Mr. Golden Mine. Oh, yes. Hello. What was his name? Ne uh, Cluster. Good to see you again. Oh, it's Nesta. Right, yes. Well, we're just um, we're just going up to see your boss. Oh, yeah, Captain's expected. You come on in. And he, uh, he opens the door. Uh, he's in an interview right now, but we'll get him in a sec. Who is he interviewing? Oh, well, you know, I have us checking everybody coming in. Oh, right. Like we, like we did, yes. The whole thing, yes, at the beginning, yes. Uh, this time, instead of being taken to uh, one of those interrogation rooms, he lets you into uh, the sort of main uh, lounge area for the guards. There's a small fireplace in the back. There's a couple of chairs set up around a table. Small kitchenette in the corner where he goes and he asks, he says, uh, yeah, you want anything to drink? No, it's a bit early in the day. Water. If you have water, I am dying of thirst. Uh, he actually just brings over a couple of glasses and sets a pitcher of water down on the table. Are you insane? You never drink the water. Why do you think everyone, why do you think everyone always just drinks ale or alcohol? It's the only way you can drink, imbibe, or potable anything. Forgive my profanity, but you are being a little bit of a negative Nancy. All right, well, when you're trapped in the bathroom for the rest of the afternoon, don't come calling, complaining to me. That's why I pre-shat. Uh, Captain Bosley walks out into the room. He says, After that important piece of <laughs> yeah. dialogue. Please tell me he heard the tail end of that. Oh, I'm sure he did. <laughs> He's just standing in the doorway the whole time. He, uh, he smiles. He says, uh, ah, Mr. Golden. Yeah. Mr. Gold. Mr. Golden Mane. Are you okay? You had a stroke there for a second. <laughs> I just, uh, I was looking for my water. It wasn't where I left it, so I... Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, no, uh, Nettie said we could have some. Oh, yes, of course. Yes, so, uh, uh you've agreed to help push our position then? Well, that's a, it's a little bit presumptive of you, but yes, that just so happens to be what we've shown up here to do. Um, uh, I have some... I don't even know what the word is. Colleagues, I guess, um, out uh, Party amongst. You came in with. Yeah, those guys. They're uh, they're about the town, uh, get, uh, getting the lay of things, I assume. Um, now, now let me get this straight. So tonight there's the meeting between um, between the the Griffins and the the Silver Folk. Right. So it's going to be your old friend, I guess. Uh... Mr. Tell Griffin. Uh, it's going to be the representative for the uh, Silver Moons, uh, Miss Collins. And then it's going to be the, uh, the Harmony Assembly. The, my brother, Matthias, uh, the illustrious Elena Sinclair, and uh, Tom Garrett. He runs the bar that you destroyed last Right. Time. Now, your brother's... Allegedly. Right, yes, thank you. Uh, your brother... What is he trying? So you, it made you know, the other night. It it sounded as though you were, he was not working in the interest of the town. What is he trying to get in this de three way deal? Oh, believe me, Matthias. I'm sure Matthias thinks he's working on the best interests of the town. He just he can't see the forest for the trees. He he thinks that if we throw in our lot, assisting the Red Griffins, that we can somehow be protected under their auspices. And I'm sure that's what little Griff is promising him, but I know Griff, I know his type, and I'm sure whatever the kind of protection they work out is going to wind up putting a boot on our necks. Yes, uh, uh, having also known that particular gentleman, I can tell you that either he will come out victorious in this... Uh, in this meeting and put his boot on your necks, or he will get super butt hurt that he lost and burn the place to the ground. That is my worry as well. So regardless of, um, obviously we have the optimal situation of uh, maintaining your independence and freedom, 
Um, but the uh, really the, the scenario we want to avoid at all costs is a, a, a victory for the Tell Griffins. We're agreed on that. Now, as for Miss Collins, I... Yes, what of this, this person? I don't know very much about what she's here for. What I have gathered is that apparently she and by extension the Silver Moons are negotiating on behalf of some other client. I don't know anything about them, though. Uh, but Probably one of your siblings. I'm sorry. Just throwing that out there. No, that's... You know what? Narratively, that would make a lot of sense. What do you mean, narratively? I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> uh, now, uh, Miss Sinclair seems to be rather inclined toward helping them. Uh, Elena, again, I... Sure, she thinks she's working in the best interests of the community, but she has a habit of she has a habit of seeing gold as the solution to everything, and she knows the silver moons control the flow of gold all throughout the peninsula, so she thinks gold can be our shield, and I have my doubts a terrible shield it melts in the high heat it's a very soft metal. I know it's a terrible metaphor. I'm trying to tell her that. I was noodling this a bit last night after this whole situation was foisted on me. Um, but since I'm here, I might as well make the best of it. Um, uh, it seemed to me, just sort of spitballing, that the if we want them to not control the town, outside of me somehow miraculously convincing all three of them to give up, which, you know, not really... That's maybe like a one in twenty chance of that happening. Let's. Uh, the the thing that I was thinking was that the best way for them to best way to keep your town independent is for them to not want the town anymore. I see. So you're you want to trash it like you trash the bar? No, not necessarily. Allegedly, like a, allegedly thank you. Allegedly trash the bar. The best way to get someone to lose interest in a place is to depreciate its real estate value. And I look to libertarians. Am I, am I incorrect in this assessment? That is 100% correct. So while we, we need to figure out a way, perhaps, to keep the town viable for your use, but make it undesirable for them. Hmm. So obviously outside of tr trashing and destroying the town, which would make it unviable for you all to continue living here, that would obviously not be the best case scenario. We just need to make it so that they think that the town is unusable. I see. Uh, a ruse. Yes, yes, a ruse. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, this is sort of my, this is sort of my bailiwick, if you will. Uh, or Ballywick? I just immediately... That's the... I've never used that word out loud in my entire life. Ballywick. Ballywick. Thank you. I'm very intelligent. I, <laughs> I, you know, I didn't go to college, but I did... I was homeschooled. Um, Heavens. Everyone knows... Yes, I know. I, everyone knows that the homeschooled are the, are the most intelligent um, and well-rounded individuals. Um, right, Libertarius? I look back to Libertarius. Yeah, yeah, no. I was homeschooled for two years. Yes, yes. Um... So if there was just some way we could trick them into thinking that the town wasn't worth anything anymore. Now, the, they want the town because of your food sorry, production. Sorry, sorry, I have to stop and go back to Libertarian I was homeschooled for two years. That's another cut to a free marketeer raiding party just, just caving in the skulls of a passing hero. <laughs> you learn a lot in those field trips. <laughs> now we're back. <laughs> now, your chief resource and the reason that they want this town is your food production is that that is not is that not correct that is what the negotiation is about this evening correct so we need to make it seem as though you will be unable to produce the same amount of food that you have produced heretofore that's true without the food i don't see why they'd want anything to do with us they would have bigger problems now is there anything that with anything to your mind, having awareness of this area, that could be used to threaten the ability of this town to make its food, to grow its food. He thinks for a moment, and he, he kind of, uh, you see a smile creep across his lips as he says, uh, it does make me think that uh, perhaps, actually, uh, 
I think it was maybe 15, 16 years ago, several hags attempted to set up a coven in the ruins behind the town. The old town up north? The ruins, yes, up north. They, they. I stagger again, and I, I reach out to hold Libertarius. It's like, it's that feeling again. <laughs> The whole way we found out about them was because the magic they were using, it, it was casting some kind of curse. It was causing the vegetation to wilt. We had a couple of bad harvests, and eventually we managed to root them out. That was one of my first assignments in charge of the guard. It was, uh, it was also one of our last great victories before we stopped patrolling the area back there. But if we were to, say, find some kind of threat back there... It would be believable. So you killed these hags already? Uh, like I said, 16 years ago. Okay. So we can't use the hags. Not the first time you said that. Well, perhaps they left something behind. Um, I don't know, spell book, knowledge, something. You see, he, he, he kind of lights up for a moment. He says, uh, they'd set up in the old tower. They probably do still have something in there we I, I can tell you i went in there I, I cleared them out personally and i had no interest in sticking around and, and taking any of their things ah then you have come to the right place because that is 100 percent my deal i think you might be onto something golden mane of course i am i'm septimus golden mane <laughs> planner master planner I'll tell you what, then. Uh, you can assemble your party. I'll let the guards at the north gate know that it's all right to let you through. Sounds great. S super stoked to go up there. In the meantime, I'll see if I can keep the meeting delayed, but uh, if you can come back with some kind of unfortunate news, that might just help the negotiations. All right. I guess... Um... I turn to Libertarius, I guess we're Scooby-Doing this shit after all. Zoinks. <laughs> I guess ultimately we're going all the way up there, huh? Way up north? Going way up there, huh? Nobody goes up there no more. Not since the incident. Not oh, since everyone got too old to patrol. On the way, on the way into it, can we just pass by like a gas station with an old guy in a rocking chair? <laughs> Where are you guys going? Where are you going up there? <laughs> you live here? No, <laughs> the only gas station in the Wyvern Peninsula. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even have auto cars no more. By the way, Rob, you you de you you picked up what I was putting down, but in my head, I was quite literally. Like, I was like, worst case scenario, I'm thinking we fake a terrorist attack. <laughs> Are you talking about within this game, Steve? Or <laughs> Yes. Okay, cool. No, I was like, maybe there'd be some way for us to get our hands on a lot of, like, really terrible, magical, explosive material that would completely sow this entire region with... Uh, we don't have you know, a bad with... track record of that specific thing at all. Yeah, like, do you know where any wildfire is that I could, like, <laughs> threaten the town with? Like, I've got this new cell phone. I could, like, rig this up as a detonator, right, and threaten the town unless they kill leave. Kill us all! I'll kill us all! I guess, to be fair, everyone... Everyone everyone already thinks the B-Shown 2 to play it was a false flag operation, so that is, that is currently your modus operandi. <laughs> Oh, uh, I just I just walk into the meeting with a bomb vest on. It's like, I'll take us all out if you don't leave town. <laughs> so after everyone has had their individual investigations, uh, how is the party reassembling? We are going to pick right back up with uh, Septimus and Libertarius leaving their meeting. I, I touched my finger to the thing in my ear. I like that idea. Yeah, that's how they work. Yeah, <laughs> I think I. It's like, I'm tapping. I'm just tapping. I actually don't know how it works. I'm just tapping on it. Just like, hello, hello, hello. Can people hear me? And we keep hearing like the first half of hello cut off repeatedly. Oh, here. <laughs> oh, yes, that's true. <laughs> is he working out? <laughs> Libertarius, is this thing working? <laughs> Libertarius, is this thing working? I mean, I hear you fine, but I'm standing right next to you. So, <laughs> I don't know. You had these in the fountainhead. You said they had it. Do you know how this works? <laughs> Look, I sold them. I didn't say I used them. 
Well, excuse me, I didn't know you didn't t test the merchandise before you sold it. Uh, it, it had a lot of, let's say, liquid damage when I attained it. Uh, alright, I finally, I, I press it, hold on. Hello, can anyone hear me? Oh, boy, what's up, boss? Alright, I think we've I got- I can hear you! Oh, Jesus, God. <laughs> this is, um, I guess, am I, am I headquarters? I'm still in the suite. Wait, no, you said there were only four. How does Zooks have one? Well, I've got the assistant itself. Oh, I thought I put that in my pocket. All right, good to know. <laughs> no, you ju you just grabbed a brick, Septimus. <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> you have a literal rock. <laughs> oh, man, it's I've been sweating yeah, bullets been here walking around day. with this. I was like, okay, I mean, he, he must have some master plan. That's his thing, but... <laughs> Septimus reaches into his coat and he pulls out a, a black ashtray engraved with Harmony Hills Country Club. <laughs> all right. All right. Zooks, good. I'm glad you had one of these. Um, so uh, so I, 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 I took the job. Um, I, 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 had a, I had an idea last night. I, I talked, with the, talked with the captain about it. Um, there's a, uh, he says that there were up in, the, up in the haunted ruins of the northern part of town, in the tower, there was a coven of hags, uh, and apparently they were working on some sort of some sort of spellcraft that was poisoning the uh, the town's food supply. I figured we'd go up there, see what they were about, and uh, maybe threaten the town with that self same poison. Get the get the the crews off their backs. What what did you guys come up with? Ah, subterfuge. <laughs> or you know, actually do it. It could be a threat. It could not be. We'll find out when we get up there. What did you guys come up with? I mean, I, I met that uh, that lovely Dex lady. She told us she's going to be there at the talks tonight. So uh, it seems uh, we, we at least have a friend in that in that silver lady from last night. Real fancy. Silver lady named Dex. What was her last name? Uh, Collins. So the head negotiator for one of the two crews we're trying to trick, you told her about our plans. Uh, well, you know, sort of. Wait, is that that more, human girl more that, that was at the we bar? were going to be present, not really our plans, because to be fair, I didn't know much about the plans. Yes, yes, that, that's the one, Rosie. That, that oh, pretty she's lady. she's cool. No, nah, it'll be fine. She's cool. It will be fine. She's cool. That's, that's your, that's your read on the, that's your take on the situation. Trust me, it'll be fine. She's cool. I, I mean, it, the one thing she did say is that we were at least by default friends because we had a common enemy in Griff. So if nothing else, it's a step one. All right, that that much is true. We, I did, I did par, uh, I did uh, tell the uh, tell the captain. We, at the very least, the la the one thing we cannot do is let Griff get away with victory in this uh, worst case scenario. We know what side doesn't want to win. But we definitely want to keep the town independent, if at all at all costs. I don't know. Giving away our, uh, we didn't have a plan, granted, but giving away our intentions to do that might have soured our negotiating standpoint a bit. But I guess we'll um, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Uh, Rosie, what did you come up with? Yeah. So I met some friends in the apple orchard, and they all seemed so happy. And then I kept walking, and then Thistle, his name is actually Hal, and I met him. And he was working on a boat. And guys, I gotta help him because this is the coolest place ever and I want this to be home. And yeah, we gotta go to the ruins. Okay, crack reporting crack reporting there, Lois Lane. <laughs> there, there was a boat in the orchard? Who's Lois? No, no, the boathouse. So I went from the orchard to the boathouse. This place has everything. Wow, a place you could really call home, huh, Septimus? Or if not us, at least some people who really... Yeah, do. my people. <laughs> okay, great. That's terrific. So, so, uh, so, what what does this have to do with anything that we're doing? Uh, uh, everything. That's what we should be doing. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I mean, I guess to the point. If if there's all those more mouths out there to feed, then we can kind of double down on your food emergency thing because, like, they definitely can't produce enough food if there's suddenly five times as many mouths to feed. That's true. We could also just like wreck the walls and they, they could just like stream in and, you know, we could like really depreciate the real estate value of the whole town as a whole by, you know, like breaking down walls. I'm all about barrier good walls breaking. Make good, good, walls make, good walls make good neighbors. That's what my dad always I think said. we should go and just assess everything that that area might need as far as improvements go. And we can also pitch that, you know, I know my people are hard workers. If I know what kind of jobs we have in store for them. I can sell them on that too. 
but we got to get eyes on this place. On which place? The the ruins, all of the stuff that they want us to fix up. Okay, great. All right. Just just bringing it back around cuz I really lost track of what we were talking about. <laughs> Not going to lie. Is that you, Septimus, sir? That is me. Yes, that's me, Septimus, saying a true thing out loud to you people. Oh, it was the first time for everything. Uh, Zooks chimes in and says, All right, this all sounds great. Do you want me and Crunchy to meet you guys? Yes, I want you and Crunchy to meet us, guys. We're going to meet at the gate leading outside, out of the town into the old ruins. All right. On our way. As soon as I find Crunchy. God damn it, Zooks! He was right here. All right, you find Crunchy. Let's, um, I don't know. Did any of you get any information about, like, where the town, like, uh, like where the general store is or anything? Uh, I mean, I was at a, I don't know if it's the standard operating procedure, but the room I met that lady in was in a big marketplace. So, I mean, certainly is temporarily. All right, because I think what we probably need to do, and shit, I should have... Rob, am I still in the... Are we still in the, the guard thing? Uh, I thought you were walking and talking, but you could still we, be in we, the guard thing if you... We want. were walking. We were walking out. I said, oh, shit. And then I run back... And then I run back upstairs. <laughs> okay. Uh, I barge back into the room we were in where the captain is. Okay. <laughs> Do you know where I can get supplies? Uh, he, the <laughs> captain, so, okay, so the captain turns from the interrogation table. There is a terrified looking, uh, elven merchant, like clutching toward his belt nervously. Uh, <laughs> uh, as, as, uh, and, and, and he says, oh my goodness. Uh, and the captain says, uh, well, yes, the, uh, the marketplace is in the inn, if you want to head over to the club there. Okay, do you have like a bill of credit you can give me? Because you said you said you were all about helping me with supplies if I help if I if I to do this thing for you. Um he kind of he turns, he he scribbles down a note and signs it, and then he hands it to you. He says, uh that should be worth uh, some service within reason. I'm sure they're usually happy to assist the guard. All right, terrific, great, thanks. Hey, good luck with the, you know, beating this guy up and uh, getting information out of him. All right, I'll, I'll see you later. Bye. Are you going to beat me up? No, <laughs> we're just asking questions. <laughs> oh, sure, questions. Wink, wink, wink. I know what you mean. And then I run away. I tap my ear again. Okay, new plan. We meet at the marketplace where Abe is. <laughs> all right. Um. So yeah, all of you guys head back into the club. Uh. Heading toward the marketplace. As you walk inside, it is much the same as when Abe saw it earlier. Um, still bustling with activity. Uh, an hour or so later, the uh, are you? Why, what are you guys looking for in particular? Well, healing potions. Uh, I assume uh, if there's an alchemist nearby or a, <clears throat> a weaponsmith. Absolutely. Uh, you see, there is. Uh, uh, as you walk inside. Actually, next to the woman selling preserves, there is a large kiosk that's been set up. Uh, you see uh, a younger elven gentleman who is there with a mortar and pestle, kind of making conversation as he grinds up some ingredients. Uh, he has a selection of potions in front of him. Are we all together? I figure you are, right? That's what you said. You told everybody to meet. Yeah, so the yeah, the whole party is met up there in the marketplace. I like to f uh, picture that Abe was just standing there silently waiting, staring at the door. Hi! <laughs> <laughs> all right, yes, 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 hello. We're all here. Um, all right, I guess... Uh, this guy's got a bunch of potions. Uh, you, you said you like shopping, right? What are you selling? <laughs> what are you buying? <laughs> uh, potions, I'll buy it at a high price. <laughs> I'm a mark, let me tell you. Uh, so, all right, so so Septimus and crew then walk up, I'm assuming, walk up to this elven gentleman. Uh, he smiles as he sees, he says, Oh, well, hello, friends. Uh, how can we assist you? Uh, we're on a very dangerous mission for the town guard. We're going up to the to the old ruins north of town. We're going to need some protection. Uh, 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 what, what do you have for sale? Healing potions, uh, protective charms, anything of that nature? Oh, are they, they're doing that again? 
oh boy, I thought they stopped that. Um, uh, you said the, the captain sent you, Captain Bosley. Yes, I show him the I show him the note. He looks at. It, he says, "Oh, well, well, yeah, I guess that's that, that does look above board. I guess." Um, uh, uh, sure. Uh, I mean, I've got a, I've got some basic healing potions. Um, he kind of reaches under the counter and he brings up. He says, uh, "I've got six of these healing potions here. If you'd, uh, I could, I could spare those. Uh, anything else in particular you're looking for?" What did he say? They're doing this again in response to clearing out the woods. Oh, okay, okay. Uh now. Uh... Actually, and at that point, the uh, the man snaps his fingers. He goes, "Oh yeah!" And if you're heading up there, you are definitely gonna want. And he pulls out another case. Uh, six of these. Uh, they're poison antidotes. Uh, antivenom. Uh, I'm already not liking this. <laughs> that uh, that that'll help uh, help a bit. Um, and I guess I could spare a restoration potion just in case. And he reaches under the counter and pulls out a, a, a large uh, blue vial and places it atop of him. Uh, yeah, and if you need anything else more specific than that, I'm, I'm probably going to need some kind of payment, but maybe may, maybe I can help you. How many healing potions was that, Rob? Uh, six healing potions. So uh, there's um, how many of us? But Zooks and Crunchy, so I guess that'd be one Six, each. Six, yeah, one each. Right. If you wanted to give the give one to Zooks and one to Crunchy, and then, I always steal it off them later. Yeah, exactly. and there'll be <laughs> there are potions of superior healing, or no, sorry, potion of greater healing. So the same same as before the four d four plus four. Yeah, and then there were also six uh, potions of poison antidote. Um, Rob, I have an immunity to disease. Would that As negate a paladin? Uh, you it it is different. Poison is different than disease. I will take one then. Good question though. Um, and then he has the one potion of uh, lesser restoration. All right. Now this this all seems this all seems very necessary. But and I get I get in real close. Let me ask you this: Do you have any top shelf items? I get in real close. Let me. You have any top shelf items? <laughs> yeah. Give me persuasion. You kiss him gently on the cheek. <laughs> you have any top shelf items? <laughs> what what kind of check was it? Uh, persuasion check. <laughs> I'm glad to see this in you, friend. Seduce him. <laughs> uh, Eighteen. Eighteen. Um, That's with a flat zero charisma. <laughs> he looks. Uh, he looks around. He says, "Well, there is something a little unorthodox that I've been working on." He unzips his pants. <laughs> That's part of it. But uh, if it provided it works like I think it will, uh, very useful. He turns around and he he pulls out what looks to be um, a pretty normal looking bottle. But it's like uh, it's milky white. And it just has like a little label scrawled across it that just says haste. Gross. <laughs> he says... Um, this is a uh, this is a little bespoke creation I've been working on. It's a potion of haste. Drinking this should give you uh, an incredible burst of speed, make you quick as lightning. For well, that's the part I'm not sure about. Uh, probably at least a minute, maybe a little more. I haven't had a chance to test it, but uh, what say what say for uh, for the price of on the house? I test this puppy out for you and give you a little after action report. Uh, I mean, I'll be honest. The ingredients for this are well, you know, what? persuasion check. Let's see. Septimus is always looking for faster ways to flee a battle. Yeah, that one's only a fifteen. On a fifteen, he says. On on, on a fifteen, he says. Well, I'll be honest, that, that is something I could use, but I the ingredients in this are, are pretty expensive. I couldn't just give it away, but I could give it to you at a discount. What are we talking? Now, quick, sorry, uh, Rob, quick side note. Would would that be more like, for this potion creation, is that like uh, medicine or nature? Would that be more appropriate for for its creation? Or arcana? Medicine? medicine? Okay. Medicine. What okay, then uh, a 17 on a medicine check uh, to to assist Steve and say, uh, I mean, there's a bit of cost associated with that, man, but 
we're going to be going out in the woods. I can pick up those supplies. I know precisely what you're looking for. Okay, that's actually pretty uh, It's pretty convincing. Uh, roll again, Steve. See if you do any better. We're almost playing D&D here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't go crazy. Guess who did worse? Well, can't say I didn't try. No. Uh, he, uh, uh, the apothecary looks over toward you. Uh, he says, well, that's true. You can get a lot of the base components up there, but uh, in truth, there's some exotic stuff here. Stuff I, I, I had to, I had to, I have to, I have to order special. It's nothing that grows up there. I'm also going to try, and I'm going to say, hey, look, man, I know this forest like the back of my hand. I've seen these ingredients. We can definitely pick these up for you. We'll do what, one more persuasion <laughs> check from Rosie, and then that's it. <laughs> Thank you, DM. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. It's because he just realized she was there. Uh, it's not. It's an 11. <laughs> We're just pissing this guy off. <laughs> uh, yeah, look, you know, in fact, I'm not even sure. It, might, it actually might be dangerous to just give it out like that. Um, so you expect me, I'm going to keep going, so you expect me to pay for a thing that could potentially kill me? Hey, you asked for something exotic. Here, I'll just put it back. He... No, 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 here, here, here. I, uh, I, I hand him a shiny gold piece. And he, he looks down at it and he says, oh, well, I mean, the ingredients alone are five gold pieces. I hand him four more shiny gold pieces. All right, all right, all right. Well, just, he hands it to you. He says, as long as you come back and... I, I'm sure you'll find something up there. You can make it worth my while when you get back. Unless it kills me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, at that point, I guess, uh, I guess I'll, uh, we'll all have learned something. <laughs> Just make sure, make sure that's what kills you, not whatever you find up there. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Does anyone else need anything before we, before we no, leave? I'm Any... done here. <laughs> all right. And uh, Septimus adds a potion of haste to his. Uh, uh, you know what? Potion of haste, parentheses, experimental. <laughs> yes. Uh, all right. Was there anything else you guys wanted before you set off? Is there anything else in here? Yeah, I mean, it's a general bazaar. If there's anything you're looking for, it's you generally find bizarre. a merchant that... You guys need anything? You guys need anything? Well, yeah, I'll get some chips. Yep. You could definitely... Yep. <laughs> you, 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 you get some, like, potato chips or, like, you know British fries? Uh... I want something that, yeah, but I'm going to get him like into Pringles. I don't want to be loud when I eat them. Oh, a crisps person. Mm. Well, I was going to say like a Pringles, like a. Yeah, so that is not a chip. Oh, you said crisp as in, okay, yeah. wait, wait. You would not consider Pringles to be chips? No, it's actually a legal difference. A potato chip is a sliced potato. Uh, Pringles are made from potato flakes, so they are, in fact, a potato crisp. All right, I'm going to do hard... <laughs> Next time on the Freedom Guild. <laughs> hard left turn, sunflower seeds, final answer. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's easy. Uh, there, is a, there is a stall selling like these like big sunflower seeds. Are they magical in some way? Not at all. <laughs> Magically delicious. Is there a is there a blacksmith of some kind or? A... Um, over in the corner, you do see uh, what looks to be a half orc gentleman uh, has a table of uh, weaponry and uh, some some armor pieces uh, laid out in front of him. Uh, as you walk over toward him. Um, he smiles, a big booming smile, and says, uh, Well, howdy, friends. I suppose you're from out of town as well. I'm Greth. I'm the local blacksmith here. Excellent. Um, <laughs> hi. Hello. I wave. I mean, you're the one that wanted to come and talk to me, <laughs> so you tell me what you want. <laughs> uh, well, uh, you know, I've got... Um... I don't know. Should I? Can I? Can I see his wares from where I am? Can I like do an investigation sure. to see if there's yeah, anything worth buying? Check. <laughs> twenty-three. Uh, twenty-three. Uh, he, his work looks to be good. Uh, of like decent quality. Uh, and he looks like he has a lot of it. Uh, like you could see crates. Be, like he's got crates stacked behind him. Uh, none of it seems particularly exceptional. Like nothing jumps out at you. But it looks like he he does good quality work. Would you say, Rob, that he looks like he has enough weapons to arm a significant portion of the townspeople? Yeah, actually, you would say, you know, maybe not 
fully, but yeah, you could probably equip a militia with everything he's got going on back there. Interesting. Um, Septimus happens upon an idea uh, in this moment, uh, investigating and noticing that. Oh, uh, let me ask you. Let me ask you something, friend. Um, what? Um, you you been here long? Been in the town long? Oh yeah, I have. I I moved up here maybe uh, uh about five or six years ago. My shop burned down in Tamiston, and I just started walking out. But I make good work, and 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 I came out here with my cart, and I, I guess they needed a blacksmith, and and uh, it took some doing. They were a little suspicious at first, but uh, I set up shop here. I actually work out of the boathouse over there, but uh, I sell it in here, and you know, typical blacksmith things. An excellent amount of detail. Thank you. Um... <laughs> you sound very narratively compelling, man. <laughs> oh, you know. Not everybody could be unusual. A lot of us are just good, honest folk doing what we look like we do. <laughs> uh, let me ask you this, friend. Have you um, have you heard tell of um, the poss possibility of uh, this town changing hands? Oh, I don't know about changing hands. I just know we got some fancy folk from Tamistin in. Some of the crew members, some of the gangs are talking to the Harmony Assembly. But I don't know much about that. Well, would you uh, would you go so far as to say that if you were to found out that they were discussing terms for which of them was going to own your fair town, you would be angered by such a thing? Oh, I wouldn't be happy about it, I can tell you that. I am still convinced that it was those damn red griffins what burned down my old shop in Tamiston. When did that happen? About six years ago. Yeah, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I do. I do that very like quickly, like to my to the side. Oh, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. Um, uh, well, I I was wondering. You seem to have quite a few wares here. Um, as a blacksmith, uh, you wouldn't happen to also know how to possibly wield these weapons, would you? Oh, sure, of course. Look at I that mean, guy's body. He could definitely do it. I'm not a knight or nothing, but uh, I know a thing or two about swinging a blade. Well, I was wondering. Uh, you might, um, we might have caused possibly require a, a, a large majority of arms very quickly. Uh, I was wondering uh, if you could just keep that, uh, what it would cost for you to possibly not sell any of these wares for, say, a 24 to 48 hour period, uh, we, uh, or possibly a rental of all of them? All of them? Uh, I mean, um, I guess I could, I could close up shop early today if you want. I mean, I'd have to, I'd be foregoing a fair bit of profit. I mean, um, make a perceive check, Steve. Fifteen. On a fifteen? I mean, for, I mean, I, I mean, I couldn't close up shop for any less than a hundred gold pieces. Especially with all these folks coming through. Tell you what, um, that seems like a small price to pay for if what you're thinking of is true, man. Tell you what, you uh, you you close up shop, close up shop for the rest of the day. You keep your wares uh, on standby, and uh, yes, I could meet that price. Oh, all right. Well, that sounds pretty good to me. I need the money up front. This, yeah, that's uh, uh, but of course, um, but this would mean uh, this uh. This money would also go towards uh, potentially renting it for a one-time use. Uh, sure. I mean, that could come off whatever kind of total we work out. Sure, sure. We'll we'll put that on the back burner. Just a little idea I'm noodling. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Excellent. And I hand him a, a pouch of 100 gold pieces. <laughs> Pleasure doing business with you. I'm going drinking. Okay, well, no, oh, damn it, all right. And he begins to pack his wares up. <laughs> I turn back to, I turn back to, to everyone, and just, just, um, just, just for, just for possible future, uh, future use. He seems great. I always wanted to ask him if he wanted to come along. He has the afternoon free. <laughs> That's true. He does have the afternoon free now. Now, just a little, uh, uh, just a, uh, there was a, there was a gentleman I knew. Uh, back in Tamiston, uh, named uh, Kurosawa, told me a lot of interesting stories, and uh, I just happened to have one of those stories, uh, a little bit of inspiration for me. But 
That's if plan A goes awry, and we never let plan A go awry. Right, Libertarius? Goes awry all the time. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> yeah, Zeus has got it. Zeus charges forward with enthusiasm. <laughs> all right, let's go. Let's go to the fucking haunted town. <laughs> uh, all right, you guys head up toward the north gate. I would like to say, just out of character, when there was only three players, it took us an entire session to shop the last <laughs> time, and now that we've added two, it took us 20 minutes. <laughs> well, nobody had to grab a food order while we were shopping, so <laughs> sped it up slightly. Also, at no point did you assault and rob any of the shopkeepers. <laughs> That's true. That speeds things up, too. <laughs> oh, I forgot that that was a possibility. I could have done that instead. Damn it. <laughs> I pull Septimus back as he tries to turn back to the blacksmith. We, we now have a good alternate smash cut, though, where he's just in the bar drinking, enjoying himself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's so true. Okay. Uh, all right. Best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> you should have met this idiot. <laughs> Shots on me. <laughs> he thinks I own the blacksmith shop. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh. Uh, I kind of want to do a, a, a spin off show that's just the side quest of this blacksmith. <laughs> The stories he could tell. <laughs> Excuse me, blacksmith. I'll put that in air quotes. <laughs> oh, no, I got to decide if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Little did he know, I was the town drunk. <laughs> Just got uh, paid a couple bucks to watch the stand while the actual guy was in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah. He comes back, he's locked out. <laughs> With all of his stuff. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.